Hi, this is Paula J and welcome to another episode of Secure Hacks Weekly. Today I'm with Matus and Matus is our cybersecurity specialist. How is it going? Good, thank you. Hi. Oh, cool, cool. So, uh, yeah, so what is up for today? So today we have five interesting features of Burp. That sounds good. And the details? Yeah, so Burp is probably the most used tool when it, uh, by security professionals when it comes to uh, analyzing of web services. It's mostly used as a proxy in order to perform many in the middle attacks, but it has much more cool features and I want to show you five favorites of mine. Good. So no time to lose, guys. Let's dig in. Okay, guys, so Burp. Burp is an HTTP intercepting proxy. It means uh, you will use it to intercept the communication between your browser and, for example, the application you are testing. Uh, Burp has many other features, like if you see those modules in here, Proxy, Spider, Scanner. We won't be covering all of them today, but I want to show you five favorite features of mine, which I'm using in every pen test. So the first one uh, is in the target module, and it's called Scope. Scope is really important. Uh, you need to set it properly before every pen test, because Burp and its modules is uh, distinguishing which domains are going to be tested. Uh, based on the settings in here. So, for example, you have the two fields. First one is include in scope, the second is exclude from scope. So, uh, as you can probably tell, the first one is for included items, second is from excluded items. Uh, when we switch to web browser now and generate some traffic, um, my application is running on localhost and uh, port 8080. And I'll switch to sitemap, you see all these domains which were accessed by Burp when we refresh the page. So we are only interested in localhost on port 8080. So we right click on it and say add to the scope. Yep. So now in scope, you see there is include in scope is localhost. Next thing you want to do is to review the scope and maybe exclude some stuff which you don't want to have there or you are not interested in having there. Uh, so for example, right now, you can see that this application or will send some cat request every few seconds. So let's say we don't want to have them or we are not interested in lesson overview and lesson menu. So we can right click on it and say remove from scope, also from the second one. Now the scope was updated in target module and the proxy module is already working uh, with the scope uh, with, with such limitations. So if, you, if I switch back now, you see the exclude from scope is the localhost 8080 and is lesson overview, is lesson menu. So, uh, as I said, the scope settings are shared among the modules. For example, scanner module is, uh, which is not available here because it's free version of Burp, but when you have a Burp suit professional, then you can scan sites and the scanner is distinguishing based on your scope or it can be set in the way that it will, it will distinguish based on your scope. So it's really important to set up scope properly. Second interesting thing I want to show you is if we put this back to the scope now. HTTP history. Defaultly, uh, HTTP history window is set up in the way that all the new requests are up added in the end of the list. So for example, now we can see 8587. If you wait for a few seconds and I scroll down, you see there are another new requests. The window will not scroll down automatically. So, cool thing you can do if you want to monitor live traffic, live communication, is to go up and in here, double click on the pound, you will reverse the order and now all the new messages are added on the top. So, if you, for example, do a logon, and you want to see what kind of uh, requests are coming through Burp, you can just easily reverse the order and you don't have to scroll down. So I think that's pretty useful. Another thing I want to talk about is a repeater module. A repeater is used to repeat requests to the server, as the name is suggesting. Uh, it's very useful, for example, when you do um, cross-site scripting and you are trying different payloads. In that case, it's much easier to do it with a repeater than to manually put them to your browser. Also, when you are brute forcing, for example, login, then you need to specify for Hydra or similar tool on the success and failure conditions. And uh, this is based on the responses from the server. So let me just quickly show you how to do that. Uh, if you if you go to proxy you know, and HTTP history, 
we see I have a login request in here. Let's send it to repeater. In repeater now we have two requests which are we could send it twice. Uh, two requests which are completely the same. I'll change the second one to something incorrect. So this is the wrong password. We'll send the first one to the server and we will see welcome. And we'll send the second one which is incorrect to the server and we see the login error. So these are the response messages you will use in Hydro, for example, to distinguish between uh, successful and unsuccessful logging. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is that um, when you are using Repeater, you will quite quickly create a lot of these, these entries in here. And as you can see, it's uh, getting quite hard to navigate through them. So what I usually do, I would rename them to something more meaningful than 110 and 111. Uh, so, for example, this one was successful login, so let's call it OK login. And this was unsuccessful, so let's call it not OK login. So you can see now it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, it's, it's cool when you are, for example, returning to your work you did day or two days ago and just want to quickly check something, and it's much faster when you have proper proper descriptions in here and second very useful feature is that uh, mostly when you do penetration tests uh, you will also do a retest in a few months depending how quickly your customers will fix or they will think they will fix the issues uh, so in that case when you are retesting and you have uh, these tabs here properly named and properly documented it's much faster for you to uh, to, to perform uh, the same uh, actions you did last time so that's a uh, really big help Next thing I want to show you is in the proxy module and it's the intercept feature. Intercept feature used to stop messages which are coming from your browser to the server so you can examine them. As you can see you have a few options here. First is to forward which will send message to the browser, sorry to the server. Uh, second is to drop so the message will be deleted and nothing will happen. Uh, you can perform some other actions like send it to different modules like repeater which we did previously. Uh, it's very useful when you, for example, want to see how exactly logon goes. So what kind of messages are transmitted during the logon. Uh, then you can just examine them and the forward, examine forward. So that's really useful. Uh, second uh, scenario, and this is really cool, is um, when messages have some serial numbers which are incremented every time they leaving the browser and the server. So in that case, it's much easier for you to take a message which is already configured properly by a browser uh, then changing all the fields yourself in order to be accepted by a server. So um, what I wanted to show you is that we can actually change those messages on the fly. So I'm changing the correct passwords to incorrect one right now. Test one. Uh, then we will forward the message. Now if we look to the HTTP history see that this is the original message and we have new tab here which is first says original request second says edited request so in edited request I see the message I actually edited another cool thing about this is that you have also edited flag in here so it's showing you that this request was edited by you um, you can also filter based on that so if you click here twice it will show you all the messages you edited that's pretty neat Last thing I want to show you is also in the proxy module, but in the HTTP history. Let me just check, change the order. So, as you can see, we have many messages in here, and it's quite hard to distinguish or to say what they are from the first look. So, what I usually do when something significant happens, I will just mark it. So, you can pick the messages which you want to mark, uh, right click on them, and in here you can highlight. You change their color. So, for example, these are unsuccessful logons. So, let's say they will be red. And these two on the top are successful. So, let's say they'll be green. Second thing I'll do, you can also add comments to them. So, this we will call 
not OK, login, and the green ones will go, sorry, OK, login. You can see the comments here, you can see the colors, and also what is really nice is that you can uh, filter based on the comments. So for example, you can order all the messages with the same comment, which is really useful. Uh, another thing or another the reason why I recommend to doing this is that uh, sometimes when you do penetration tests, you have limited uh, time windows in which you can access the, the service. So for example, you can test only two hours a day. So what I usually do in such situations is uh, try to generate as much traffic as I can and then uh, I would properly mark it, uh, make comments, uh, use different colors and then I would analyze it offline. And it's much easier to, when you are searching for the history of what happened, it's much easier to navigate when you have those color distinguishing than when you can uh, filter through the comments. So those were my five favorite features and functionalities of, uh, of Verb. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for watching and stay secure.